Okay, I've traced on my pattern for the um, stems and the leaves. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our paint, which is avocado, and we're going to thin it with about 80% water, 20% paint. Any more than that and you break the bond of the, the binders and the paint and then you won't be able to have it stick. It'll just kind of lift off if you rub on it or stuff. And I've got a nice big fat um, round brush. I'm going to blot it. Anytime you're doing a wash, you're going to blot your brush. And I'm going to pull towards myself. Okay, so I'm going to start at the bottom. And just a nice, I'm going to put on my glasses so I can see over there. What I thought. Okay, I'm just going to wash on, pulling towards me, trying to keep it even, which means you move kind of quickly. This is just going to be soft and pretty. Okay, and then we'll wash on the leaves as well. And that's as much base coat as these are going to get. When you're coming out here, I've got some kind of odd... Um, what I wanted to do was put a background in that said kind of where my um, my lilac, lavendery stuff is going to be growing out of. Some of it doesn't quite make sense, but I just wanted those green branch kind of lines back there. So don't worry about it if it doesn't make sense or not. The concept is you'll, you won't be able to see too much of them. Okay, so just get those kind of in. Natural lines, you don't want to be real stiff. Okay, you want to be graceful. Zoom in. So just pull out. See my brush isn't bending too much? When you're looking at a teacher, a teacher's brush, or you're taking a class, always watch the brush and what it, the brush is doing. And that will give you a big clue, and then you can start tearing it apart and saying, oh, okay, so she's not pushing very hard, or um, things like that. So I have allergies really bad this week, so if I sound like a mess, that is why. Okay, now we're going to get... I could probably use that same round brush, but I think I'm going to switch to a big, fat, yucky filbert. Thin my paint with water, same thing, blot it on the paper towel. And now I'm going to give each of these leaves, I, I didn't blot enough, see how it's puddling? Each of these leaves, just a little wash. Some of this, um, because you'll get movement in your colors, now some of these leaves are not there for anything other than to be background. I want the green underneath the flower color, so they are just there. They're not going to get anything more than backgrounded. Okay, so just put some out there. Alright, so what I've done, I'm going to start making a mucky mess here. What I've done is I've got my evergreen, this is the avocado, um, ignore this, this is Napa, we're not going to use that, um, red violet, warm white, soft blue, and turquoise blue. Now what I've done to make a really pretty kind of green color is you mix a little bit of your turquoise in with your evergreen and it's got just a lovely shade and it's going to go with this background color which is right there so we know that we've got a family member right here. I mix just a little bit okay and then we're using this old ratty um, filbert or glaze brush whatever will fit. To tone it you'll pick up just ever bit a little bit of the um, red violet and then to lighten that mix, you would go into your warm white. I just can't stand the idea of doing a really, really structured piece like this, where it's going to have the, um, the the little flowers and everything everywhere. And I want all these like spikes sticking out. So what we're going to do is just in this background, we're just going to go ahead and kind of slippy slappy, a little bit of water, in this little bit of deeper color. Here and there, on the leaves, off the leaves, doesn't matter. Okay, just to darken behind. Okay, and that's just gonna, and that's in this upper area. We wouldn't do it down in this area right here. Okay, wherever the weight of the project or the weight of the flowers is gonna be, that's where we're gonna want that. Just a little bit out there. Flat brush. Now, you know what? We're going to pick up our 
same brush. We're going to pick up Evergreen and a touch, just a touch, Evergreen and a touch of Red Violet. And that's going to tone that down to be a muddy, yucky brown. I'm going to blot on our brush and then we're going to shade the bottoms of these flowers, of these leaves of these flowers. Yuck, 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 yuck. I'm getting close for you. Okay, so you want to just bring that down along the bottom. You can blot it up here. This is not a technical thing. This is just I'm going to shade along the bottom part. We don't want to shade the top of the leaf. Let's see if I can keep you on camera here today. Noted the evergreen plus a little bit of the red violet onto my brush. I'm going to flip my project over. And then I'm going to shade the stem. Reload water as you need to. If you look at the water drop video on YouTube that I did, this would be the perfect place to practice the water drop video. And I'm turning my brush a little on the angle so that I get that chisel, chisel edge. And the reason we're adding the red violet is because we don't want this to turn into a big green project. We want it to be muted in the areas like these green things are secondary. Okay, you could almost use a liner brush to do this. Let me telephoto in. Okay, come up here. And just see how my brush has turned? It's not flat like that, it's turned on the chisel. You pick up a little bit of, I'm going to switch back to this round but no water, of warm white with spa blue and my green color with a touch of, whoops, a bit more white. And then I'm going to blot it even though I didn't have any um, water in there. And this is going to be my highlight color. I'm just going to come down center, almost like a dry brush kind of a look. Okay, bring that in. We can go a little bit brighter. The warm white. Okay, that's the final highlight. You would probably want to wait till this is dry. The final highlight will be a little bit stronger. There'd be something right here on the edge of this because that hits the light. I'm going to come up here. And it's a, important not to just do one line. If you do a couple lines and they don't overlap and then it has that layered look that isn't quite so stark and so liney looking. The nice thing about blending is each and every time, because this is a looser project, you won't have to worry about matching exactly. So I get into my um, red violet and my green. And I want to make a pretty dark brown. Muddy, yucky, nasty color. That's a color that isn't leaning to the left or the right. It is just yucky. And now, next to that, I'm going to just deeply darken that up. I'm flattening my brush out so it's on the chisel. Now, see, that side's real skinny. That side's real fat. I'm going to use that chisel edge to demark the edges of this wherever I want it deeper shadowed which is really important down here on that big part of the stem. Oops. And so now that's getting up. See how the depth is? It's starting to look round. Okay, now we want to do our leaves. We're going to use that same yucky, muddy color. Our evergreen and a little bit of red violet. There, it should be about equal, but it depends on which pigment is stronger and what your day is doing. I'm going to blot my brush strongly. I'm going to go back and I'm going to just deepen base of these and then where I want it shadowed and then this is shadowed along that turned edge. 
feather it down. Okay, feather. It's almost like a float, but not. I don't know what you actually would call this. Okay. What we've got is we've got a red violet here in our palette, mixing water with it, and we're going into our evergreen. Less, we want this to be a purpley brown muck, not a brown muck like the green was. So we wanted to lean on the purple side. And for our highlight color, we're going to go into warm white. And see how that's just browner than that mixes? Maybe a little bit more red is good. Now to, to wash it out, we're going to do that 80% water. We want this back color, color to not be like, you know, wah, here we are. All right, so now I've started already just to kind of see where I was going to get going. All right, so we want these. They're not necessarily clusters like um, perfect flower clusters. We want to just grow this, and we want them to go over the leaves. Okay, and it's a tip, 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 tip. And some are going to be in front, and some is going to have that space. There goes my nose. Okay, let's telephono in. You can see what's going on. Urk. Sometimes this camera can make you quite dyslexic. The further out you get to the edge of your um, lilac bush, then the more watery you want it to be. Because that's where it's going to just fade out. And you want this kind of be cone shaped. So, you know, don't bring this one way out over here unless that's your plan. And that can be one or two random ones. Now see how this green leaf is just poking out there. And he's a nice little friendly fellow. Now see, it's a little bit polka dotty. No problem there, because what we're going to do is we're going to pick up our bigger filbert brush, blot it out, put a wash of color, and we're just going to fill that in. And so you don't want to do it when it's wet, like I just did, because then you wash everything together. But you can just fill in that area, and that's just going to make everybody look like there's more depth behind them than there actually is. Okay, and I think I'm erasing those. And these little guys up here are the buds that haven't quite bloomed out yet, and I'm not quite satisfied that I've got enough foliage there. Make sure you keep this washy. See how these are just a little bit polka dotty? Let's get more water and let's just soften the edges a little bit. Like something else is going on. And maybe connect just a little bit more. I like that space in between. Soft ones are just in the background. You can't quite tell what's going on. Blot it with your finger. Okay. And then we want some more coming over in the front of this. Okay. And then maybe behind. So we won't go over the stem, but maybe we'll go around. Okay. See? That's that step. Okay, so I dried everything and now I'm going to deeply darken a little bit more. Just the different little clusters. Okay. Just a nice wash. Fun part, which is highlighting. Okay, now this can get more purple and it can or more, you know, purpley red color. So just a little hair of your um, nerf, the green color, and then mix in warm white. So I've got the dark, I've got two piles here. I've got this dark purpley color with a little bit of warm white, and then I've got more warm white. I'm gonna blot my brush, get that, and I'm not quite light enough. Our little flowers with petals. And notice how they kind of are close to the background color. Let me telephone in. OK, 
Okay, so we want them to be kind of close. These are going to be the supporting cast members. And they're going to stay within this darker color. You can add a little bit of water, stretch it out, and one or two can sneak out. It's always like a rule breaker, right? And still is a little bit polka dotty in some of the fuller and some of the fuller areas. All right, now we're going to add more warm white by like a bit because I want this to show. Okay, and now we're going to go on to these and we're going to make little highlight petals. doing kind of little kind of little strokes that are little flower strokes. I always do these little four petal little things. So they're not really um, a twist turn pull lift kind of a four petaled. A very nice flat brush. We're going to take the evergreen plus the red violet. I'm going to make a very controlled little float and do little V shaped strokes. And we're going to tuck them in to these top flower petals. And they want to be clustered. Don't do like one here and then one over here and then one over here. You want to do them in little clusters. You just slide it in, slide it out, little clusters. These are going to be just on the ones that are on the top. And they don't have to actually exist. You can just shade it and pretend like there's actually a flower there. Okay, get you down in even closer. Okay, there we go. Okay, so my paint's right here. Now tuck that in, the little V, tuck that in, and some are more like smooches. Okay, we need, always go in your magic numbers of three fives, that kind of thing. It's a super controlled float. Don't do a lot of water, you want it almost a kind of a dry float. outside just now getting lunch and now my nose is going crazy they're mowing and it's all, every tree in the world is in bloom maybe it's my realistic looking flowers here that are that are making me sneeze oopsie if you get a blob just unblob it unblobify it Okay, now you can take a round, but a little bit round, and you're going to mix your evergreen and your red violet, no water, and you're just going to tap in the centers of that. Okay, just tap that in, a little bit darker. And then you're going to take a little bit, I'm going to take my cad yellow and I'm going to put just a touch of that, just to tone it. And I'm going to do some little dibbly dabblies. No water. It's 
it's almost like you had too much ca caffeine. Okay, and then take a liner brush. Into your warm white. And then that's going to be your little tiny highlight. Not too big. It's real tiny, so you need a real nice fine liner. White and a controlled little float. And we're going to give a couple of these a little highlight and wiggle them a little bit. Don't just make them structured. And get you close in. Here. Okay, so it's pretty much straight and white. Now we don't want it to be too crazy. So make sure you do wiggle. And it won't just be on the flower petals where you see them, um, where they cluster. It'll be on those and then around that general area. So like I'll go on this one, wiggle it here, over here. And then I'll come over here and put in a couple of fake ones. And go on the real one. And I'm not hitting the whole edge of the thing. I want it on some of it. Okay, and that makes those a little lacy. Pardon me. Okay, so I'm not going to hit the whole thing. I'm going to make it up. Pretend little leaves. Over here, same thing. If I have, you know, like right there, I got that little blob there. I think that kind of adds to it a little bit, so I'm not going to fix that. Okay, and then I probably need a couple of fakies over here. So this is, in my mind, this is about finished right now, and we'll see how I feel once I get the other ones done. Um, they're pretty much shaped all the same way, so go ahead and repeat these steps. You can repeat these steps on the other ones, and then I'll show you after I get these done. I want to do these three clusters right here first, and then I'll do these little soft back ones that need to be a little nondescript. As I've been doing these around the thing, I'm getting a little bit looser. I wanted to show you. Okay, so I'm just adding that. And then adding that, and then I might even go over here and just add some little brush chisels here and there. And it just ends up looking like little extra petals, and probably not sideways, I mean, probably sideways is better. Just little sit downs. Not too many, but they certainly, I think they add just a little bit more. A uh, ruffled kind of appearance, a little fuller. I'm gonna keep that. So now that I have, I don't have these highlighted yet, but I have them shaded and I have them washed. So what I think I like is just adding a little bit of a wash to these non non structured, I guess for want of a better word, flower clusters, and just a little bit on that same side just to deepen them up a little bit and then maybe add a little bit more of that back behind. Add something not so strong a white um, as on the other ones, but just a little bit of the light highlight. 
in these. I don't want it to look like a black hole. I'm not really changing the angle of my brush. I mean, I guess I could, but I'm not. Just to make that look a little bit fuller. Keeping it more towards the center. Okay, now I'm taking water and my turquoise blue. And just here and there, so be real careful with this. Wide you out a little bit more. Boop. On this cooler side, I'm going to add just a little tint of that color. I'm not going to cover everything up, I'm just adding a little bit. I'm going to wash right over the tops. Now I also want to add a little bit of that color into my shadows. Bit. Okay, now we're going to add just a little bit of thinned cadmium yellow. In Not too dead though, a little bit more vibrant. Wash it so it's done. And maybe a little bit of warm white. Okay. These are just like little floating down petals. And if you want to make more in the background, make them just a little bit washier. Then we'll shade in the middle, same colors that we used before, the green plus the red. Just on those ones that are the strongest. touch of dot in the middle with that same dark color. No water. Add a little of our yellow mix. That's not going to show up until I dry this. We're going to do our toned yellow that we have on our palette. Get him maybe, and then give him a little bit of swath of yellow straight across the back just to brighten him up. Switch to that round brush, and then you use your per your green and your red mix. So evergreen and um, hello evergreen and red violet, and then that's going to be this little fuzzy bee stuff going on. to green up just a little bit more. Give him a little black tail. And maybe my bee could be fatter. I'm thinking my bee needs to be fatter. So I'll increase his little girth up back here across his back. And I'll bring a little bit more yellow up there. going to be a bee of any kind of respectability. He's going to have to carry his weight. Okay, water down some of that yucky green mix. Okay, and then give him some of these little leg things. And 
and we'll float with our flat, float with our flat into the warm white. Give him his wings. And I think I'll give him a little highlight across the back as well. Okay. I think your bee needs a little bit of veining in his wings. And I'll make his head be a little bit different. Alright, for our dragonfly body, we're going to go into our red violet. And we're going to go into we'll go red violet and into a little bit of our Victorian blue. And we're not looking so much to dead this color out as we're interested in bluing it up a little bit. Okay, it would help if I could draw a straight or a nice arched crooked line here. Okay. Get him a little head. Okay, and then this one down here, we're going to go into a little bit of our red violet with, um, with, um, avocado. Oops, too dark. I think we want a little bit of yellow in that color. Okay. I'll try not to paint on my clothes here. We're going to use warm white. Washy warm white. And we're going to wash on these wings. Just really a soft wash. And don't bring it all the way down into the body. Go ahead and let it fade so that the blue is the center of that wash. Okay, same thing down here. Okay, we're going to float with our dirty green color. So this is evergreen and the red violet. I'm going to float to the bottom of this and give him these little sections. Okay, and then to highlight his shade his little wings. I think we're just gonna do a wash. If I could find my wash brush. Mm, there it is. And that's gonna be our red violet real washy. Not washy enough. More water. There we go. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Okay, now I have to highlight these little guys right here. Warm white. I'm pretending. Okay, and then on the edge of our leaf, our leaves, blah, these guys right here, these dragonfly things. Let's give him a little bit of a highlight. And 
on top, I think a little bit of yellow and white. These guys get. They're low. And ten I think. We're going to use a number 12 flat. We're going to use some of our, um, yes, what is it, turquoise blue and a little teeny bit of red violet. And we're going to vary this. We're just going to do a space, oops, and washi, so that means a lot. And so pick up a little bit of the different colors as you go around. It'll be kind of a little variegated. It's time to start balancing colors out. I think we need to get into our big um, crescent stencil brush and we need a dry paper towel. So we're going to dip into Victorian blue, rub it all off. My brush is totally dry. I need to bring this, kind of tell a little story with it. Start framing some things in just a little bit. That it's darker underneath these. I haven't highlighted these yet either. So like they're cascading down. And then it's carrying up a little dragonfly there. Okay, and then over here it's carrying the weight of this dragonfly. I like that it comes across this way. something over here, maybe yellow. And now what we need is we need some Okay, I'm going to put that brush down. I'm going to get a new brush out. I'm going to go into my cadmium yellow, new spot on my paper towel. And that sure is bright, so we need to really rub that off. And I'm thinking let's go up here first and see if that's even going to work. yellow green on my brush. I can't see where that'll do us any harm. Okay, and then I think a little bit stronger Yellows. Okay, I changed my mind on my yellow, I mean on my color for my spring lettering. I just couldn't see it. So I'm going over it with avocado plus cadmium yellow plus warm white and ears is going to depend on the color of your lilacs 
So you're going to have to adjust the color so that you can see it. Okay, so go in here. We have this lovely yellow color. I wanted this yellow before and I couldn't make it work. So then when that purple didn't work, so now it's forcing me to make this yellow work. So the way that you can help things pop out is with intensity. So I'm going with a bright yellow, pure cadmium intensity in the middle with like a dry brush kind of a thing. And it looks like I have a little dirt. Oops, and now I'm into yellow. I'm trying to find a clean spot on my palette. I don't want my eye to go too far over here, so I'm not going to make that very intense out there. Now what this is doing is it's killing my red violet, because red violet... Let's go into our big wash brush, go into our red violet with a wash, blot it on my paper towel, and what we can do is beef up our red violet color. Okay, with our red violet and evergreen, we're going to go and give a drop shadow to the left. It's a pretty dark color. Whoops, stay on the line. Add some water as you need to. Yikes! I really stay in the lines there. Okay, now I think it's time to sputter. We know I love to scatter, so I'm going to take that dark mix with some water. So it's the green and the red violet. Loosening things up, and darkening some things up. And I think we need to go into our yellow. Oopsie. That's why we always tap off. So we take a paper hmm. Q-tip and take that one off. Boy, I have that too thick. And then some of our turquoise. And I think just some red violet. Mm 